All right, guys, in today's video, we're going to be doing some work on this retro 80s Sony sports radio. This has got a problem where if we hook up power to it, we're not getting any actuation from the cassette drive motor. All right, so if we power this guy up, we'll go ahead and we hit play. All right, we're not getting any movement on the spindle motor there. So I suspect the belt is broken. But we're going to have to open it up to find that out. So we're going to reference this service manual for the CFM 101L. This one here is a 101. That's the model number that's sold in the USA. This L one is from Europe, but it's going to be almost identical. The only difference is going to be in the uh, the reception bands. This particular one is for Italy, but uh, everything else should be fine for us. So if we take a look at this first diagram here, we can see to get this access, we're going to find some screws all along the back perimeter. These are probably Japanese industrial standard type screws, but we should be able to get them off with a Phillips. And so I'm just going to go through and remove each of these. And we'll fast forward through this because there's nothing really to see, but this one down here in the corner is worth making a, a comment on. This one in the corner here is actually securing this black little foot that you see. So we definitely want to get that one out first. And then this foot should separate. So it's got a couple of tabs here, and then the screw goes through here. So if you don't get the screw out, you can't remove this. There's also supposed to be a little foot here, but it might at some point have broken off that goes in there if this thing got dropped. And I do see like a crack on here, so this probably got damaged at some point in its life. All right, let's fast forward through the rest of these so we can separate this. All right, those six fasteners should be all we need to remove here. Let's see which ones are still a little bit stuck. So we've got one, two, three, four, five. This guy still held on by a couple of threads. All right, so there's our six fasteners. We got that out of the way. Now with that, those six fasteners and this foot out of the way, at least looking at the service manual, this should just come apart. We had already taken off the battery lid earlier. Yeah, so this should just come apart here. So let's test that theory. Okay, so there's a wire that runs to the speaker here on the front that we want to preserve. You can see some vintage engineering here, 1970s style. This whole circuit board is covered with some kind of a wax. Let's see, where is our motor? Here's our motor. Let's see if we can unplug this from down there on that circuit board just to get it out of our way. Okay. This looks like the uh, cassette motor here. Let me just double check. I'm going to take a little inspection mirror here. I'm going to see, yep, there's the motor. So let's power this up and verify our diagnosis. So if you guys can see on this mirror, if we zoom in, and let's get it where you guys can see it. You can see the actual motor there. And I'm going to hit the play button. You guys see that little residual piece of belt that's on there spinning around? Right? So the motor's fine. The belt's busted. So that's all it needs is a new belt. So if we look around in here, we can probably find, and I can see right down there. Let me see if I can get it with a pair of tweezers. You can see a piece of the old belt right there. So I'm going to fish all this old belt material out of here. It's all melted and, and uh, damaged and see if we can uh, get all that cleaned up and then we'll go ahead and talk about the, rep the replacement belt number and get it installed. Alright, so we got the pieces of this we could see. 
Now let's go ahead and remove this so we can change the belt. If we go back here and look at our little drawing, you can see there's an important notation here. A pair of long nose pliers pointing at the uh, tuning knob area. And if we take a look at the tuning knob, we can see what they're talking about is, you see this little prong right here? If we zoom in. So that little prong there, and there's another one on the other side. So what they're telling us is to get this off, we're going to have to squeeze those two prongs, and then we'll be able to pull this knob off. So that's one thing. The other is the fastener that's shown here. So let's go ahead and remove that. Whoops. I'm using a number two Phillips. Like I said, this is probably should be a JS bit, but I couldn't get that to fit in these recessed holes that they had on this particular device. All right, so I think if we just take off that tuning knob, we'll be ready to move this assembly and change the belt. So let me go get a pair of long nose pliers to do that. All right, so we're going to come over here and get this tuning knob off so that we can remove this assembly. So I'm going to take these long nose pliers and I'm just going to depress those two little snap clips there. As soon as I get them to press down, I'm going to pull the knob out. Okay, so that's all that is. And now with that out of the way, this whole contraption should come out just like that. Just got to pull away from the rubber for the buttons and then there's one harness attached to the circuit board. Let's go ahead and de-energize the board there. I'm going to grab this right down here. Pull that off and then we can flip it over and then we can see what's left of the belt. So the belt up here is just disintegrated from age. Whatever it was made of, you know, it's just degraded over time. It's well over 35 years old. This type of, uh, oh geez, I didn't even notice that. That's really, really messy stuff. So heads up on that for this belt. Let's just hope it's not a carcinogen as well, right? I don't know if we'll be able to get it off here like this, or we'll probably, yeah, we'll probably just have to use like a Q-tip with some alcohol, just because of how this material has degraded. It's basically just turned into goo, so we can't just pull the belt off. So we'll get as much of it as we can with this and a pick, and then we'll come through here and we'll clean it off with some alcohol, some isopropyl alcohol this little piece here but that's it so here's enough to see so before we touch this right so this is just going to disintegrate if we touch it but if we zoom in on this one of the things we want to take note is this original capstan belt is square this is a square belt not a round belt so if we cannot find the original OEM Sony part number we we'll want to make sure that when we look for an aftermarket replacement that it's a square belt design I'm just going to show you just a little clip of the cleaning here. I got started here. You can see how the old belt material is coming off. I'm just going to take some 50% ISP, use a Q-tip. For example, around this pulley, we'll just push it into the pulley grooves. And then we just rotate the pulley around. You can see as we, as we rotate this, it swings it out, right? Just like that. So that's the technique you'd use for the cleaning. Same thing on the motors pulley, except you're going to have to kind of hold it with your finger. You just want to get all this crud out of the grooves of the pulley. So we're going to keep doing that until it's squeaky clean. All right, folks, you can see we've got this all cleaned off here. Both are pulley on our mo on our drive motor and this big idler pulley here or this drive pulley here. You want to pay particular attention if you have the same problem on one of these old units where the belt has disintegrated to working all of your buttons and seeing if any pieces fell down underneath 
and cleaning that up too. I happened to see a piece that fell down there and a piece that fell down there, so we spent some extra time cleaning that out. We can see we went through quite a bit of Q-tips and found a lot of these pieces and got them out of there. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go back to the service manual for a couple of things. So while we've got all this apart, we've got some of this uh, stuff that's just, that just gets everywhere, guys. It just gets everywhere. Mechanical adjustments. While you've got the alcohol out, you want to go ahead and swab off the playback and record head, the pinch roller, the erase head, the, the rubber belts that haven't disintegrated, and the idlers. So, right, you'll find that the heads over here, this rubber coated uh, idler here, and then there's another one that's rubber coated right there that has not disintegrated. So we cleaned all that off as well. So now we're ready to put the new belt on. There are no lubrication items listed in the service manual, so we don't have to worry about that. We don't have any electrical problems, so we're not going to have to worry about that. And we don't have any radio reception problems, so we do not have to worry about that. The manual would have then got into the circuit board and changes there, but what we're interested in doing now is jumping right to the parts section for the part number of this belt. All right, so this belt is shown in this diagram here. Like I said, it's a square type belt. Part 136 in the diagram ends up being a Sony 3-313-335-00 capstan belt. That's what we need. That is, of course, long out of production. You can sometimes find new old stock or NOS, but we found an aftermarket one. I'll put those links in the description below. So now we just need to install this guy. Let me pop this guy out. Hopefully you guys can see this is a square belt rather than a round belt. I don't know if you can make that out, but you got you to trust me on it. This is a square belt. All right, so how do we install it? So this screw right here we need to take off. There's these two springs, and this guy will go flying. So take note of those as you remove this screw here. So you see me pressing down with my thumb to make sure that we maintain control. We're just going to very carefully work this up, right, so that these springs don't go flying. And then we're going to take the belt, we're going to run it around here. Whoops. Right, and then we're going to run it up here. Now, what you want to make sure of is that it's not twisted like I have it. Right. Do as I say, not as I do, right? So you just want to make sure that it's not twisted. Because it's a square drive belt, we've got to make sure that we don't have any kinks in it. So you might have to do this a couple of times to have it not kink up on you. So we've got it good over here. It keeps kinking up on me as I run it over the top. All right, there we go. I think we're fine there. I don't think it's kinked up. And then we're going to put that retainer back. But before I do that, I can see that there was, again, some little piece of the old belt that got underneath there. So we're going to get all that off, right, that little bit there. So we don't want that gumming up the new belt. Right there. Yeah, it's painstaking work, guys, but you know, if you're going to open it up and try to repair the thing, might as well do it right. If you're not going to do it right, don't even bother doing it at all. All right, so I think that was probably the last of it. So I'm going to take these springs. You can disconnect them, I guess. You can leave them on. It's your choice. I'm going to leave this bigger guy on. Just want to get that on there enough to get the screw started. Just like that. I know my finger is blocking 
hard to view, but you know you can reference the earlier part of the video, and then I'm going to move my finger and I'm going to show you exactly where this little bracket rests as soon as I can get this screw in position. Right, like that. So he rests right there. And then your belt runs between the two. And then we'll take our long nose pliers. So if you do take the spring off, notice that the long eyelet is here and the short eyelet is there. And then for this guy, we're just going to loop him back around right there like that. All right, so this is working just fine. And this is working just fine. And again, there's that other rubberized roller that we lubed up. So let's get it partially put back together so we can test that everything's working okay. So we're going to take this guy like this. I'm going to go ahead and plug this harness back into the circuit board like that. And then we've got to get these buttons to fit in these rubberized covers that they have. That's actually the hard part. There you go. All right, went as hard as I thought. They kind of snapped on there. We've got this one short screw. So the, sh the screw that holds this whole assembly is the smallest of the ones that we would have removed. So you can't mess that up either. Most of these screws, most of these drivers I'm using are non-magnetized, so they don't bother the head. But I do have one when I drop stuff like that to grab it. The torque, the uh, service manual doesn't give any torque values on these, so you know, just snug. Don't want to tighten it too much because it is plastic. And then we're going to reinstall our tuning knob. Making sure that still works. And that is already pre-lubricated, so you don't have to do anything with that. And now we have enough put back together test this out. So we're going to reapply power and now when we hit play, perfect. So our belt's going and I'm just getting here making sure we got friction on it and we do. So we'll pop a cassette in there and make sure that it's working okay but I'm pretty sure it will so we'll go ahead and continue with the reassembly. Don't want to play anything back just because how YouTube gets upset when you play music on your channels for monetization. All right, so we're going to put this connector back in. So this guy is keyed. So he's only going to go in one way. So again, you can't screw it up. Just like that. Take our little foot. Now, if, you ha if yours wasn't broke like this one is, you're going to slide it in from this direction to get it into that little hole on the side. And we're going to pop these six guys back in. And we're going to snug them down too. Again, no torque value. And that's basically it, guys. I hope this helps you out. I'll put the part number and a link to a search, excuse me, a search link for that part number of that capstan belt in the video description. Surprisingly, um, they are still available. There are several companies aftermarket that make them, and you can find them on both eBay and Amazon, so I'll put a link down there for that part number. And that's it. It's not a bad job. It uh, took a lot longer than it should have simply because the belt disintegrated rather than just broke. And so we spent most of this repair process cleaning. Um, the whole thing shouldn't take you more than 15 minutes, as you saw. And just be careful with the plastics so you don't break anything. If you got questions or comments, leave them below and I'll try to help. If you found the video useful and got your old Sony sport radio back in business so you can listen to your cassettes, Go ahead and pay it forward and hit that like button. I'd really appreciate it. And as always, thanks for watching.